Now, these were maneuvers that the cadets did not fly when they flew the Stearman. They didn't get into that until advanced. From takeoff with a 220 horsepower engine and a one-ton airplane, there's the first roll on takeoff. Now, watch John Moore with barely 50 feet of ground clearance. He snap rolls it. That's a high-speed stall. Now, watch it recover. Pushes the nose forward. This gentleman right here has over 37,000 hours of flight time to his credit. That's nearly three full years in the air. This is barnstorming at its finest right here. John Moore from Minnesota is the grandson of a barnstormer who actually did those barnstorming in a Curtis Jetty trainer many, many years ago, right after World War I. John learned to fly when he was just five years old. He soloed when he was 14, and that is two years younger than it's legal to solo an airplane. But John was 17. He taught himself to fly a helicopter. He built it and learned how to hover it by tying the helicopter to the three tree stumps in his yard till he learned how to fly it. Now watch John do the classic Cubanate. Watch it roll the airplane up right. He'll do the same thing. He'll slow this airplane down about 55 miles an hour across the top, just barely enough airspeed to keep it flying, and he'll roll it upright. The Stearman was not purposely built for aerobatics or designed with the use of the computer like the extra, like we saw Jan Calmer flying. This was a 1930s design as John Ward as a barnstormer's loop with about only 400 feet of vertical altitude. He'll go up over the top. From the loop, he goes into the barrel roll. Rolling around an imaginary spot in the sky, 45 degrees up and to the left of the airplane, starting and stopping at the same altitude and airspeed and heading, using the ailerons, the rudder, the throttle, and the elevator, all to make it happen. Now he'll come back over to the right-hand side after the hammerhead reposition. Here's the four-point roll. As John does this, let me tell you that this airplane does not have any of its fuel or oil system, so it cannot stay upside down. As I mentioned, this was a primary trainer and not designed to teach students aerobatics. There is nobody in the world who flies a Stearman better than John Moore. And this is a stock Stearman, a PT-17, 220 horsepower, one ton or 2,000 pounds of plane. It has a weight to power ratio of about nine to one. Watch me go as he goes up to the eight point hesitation. Point. He can't stay upside down too long or the airplane will sputter. The gas will not reach the cylinder to, to the cylinders and the oil will not be reaching the cylinders well either so you gotta, gotta keep your eyes on this guy as he does these because the super slow roll is coming next and i'm gonna shut up and let you listen because you'll actually hear the air and the engine sputter and watch for the flaming restart Now this time he'll climb for some altitude, and you can see why his peers have given him the two highest performer awards in the air show industry. The Art Scholl Memorial Showmanship Award from the International Council of Air Shows, and also the Bill Barber Award for Showmanship, given by World Air Show News and Air Show The reverse Q&A this time up to 45 does two points of a four-point roll on the up line and pulls through, watching that, pushes forward on the stick, gets the altitude he needs, and then pulls through rapidly. Look how close he gets to the ground, coming down, whoa yeah. And with the energy he has, up he goes, about 60 degrees nose up, with two points of a four point roll for the reverse Cuban eight. square loop. Again, this is a grossly underpowered airplane for the kind of aerobatics that John Moore flies. 
nobody does it better. There's the point. <laughs> you see how he squares it off? This guy has amazing control of the airplane. At about 100 miles an hour, this is open cockpit flying. He's got himself his dark glasses on. Watch him as he runs out of airspeed. He'll pull hard on the stick. That's called an inside Humpty Bump. At show center, he'll demonstrate the hammerhead roll turn. Start to the left. Gravity wins. Zero airspeed. Only the prop wash across the tail gives him the ability to turn around, and there's the quarter roll to the right. That's where he is solo this airplane. We have seen a round loop. We have seen a square loop. Watch John. He will lose energy in each of these pulls, but he's going to do a stop sign in the sky this time. There's 45, there's one, 45 for two, three, across the top, five, six, seven, and eight. Squared it off, I should say octagoned it off pretty good, didn't he? Way to go, John. Quick roll, and he'll head out to the right-hand side. He's going to climb, some, get some altitude for some speed and energy. Altitude is everything in these things. He's going to catch his breath, tighten his seat belts a little bit. All of the folks who fly air shows around the country are watching John right now. For all the folks who are here who are flying at, uh, at other parts of the show, they always watch John. Earlier, we saw the Lumshavak flown by Jan Calmer, that tumbling maneuver. This airplane never meant to tumble, but John Moore, as he climbs to about uh, 2,000 feet, maybe above the ground, he's going to set up for his version of the Lum Shabak that he named after his lovely wife, Lynn. It's called the Lynn Shabak. Well, let's watch as the steerman tumbles. Never intended to do this. Not enough gyroscopic action from the engine, but watch John's handling. The area. Go! There's the tumble. How about that for the Lynchavak? Now up he goes. Watch for the quarter roll. He'll come off the power and slide backwards into the tail slide. Then he's going to go into a spin. The airplane will be falling rapidly. Watch it spin violently. To the right, there's one turn. Let's see if he gets two out of it before he recovers. There's two turns and quick recovery. Quickly gets his energy, rolls the airplane upside down and gets her right side up to set up for the next maneuver. He'll keep the airplane high and demonstrate what happens when the airplane stalls. He'll stall and recover, fly and fall, stall and recover, fly and fall. This is called the falling leap. Power on. Watch the nose comes up. Watch it stall. Watch it break. There she goes, it's flying, it's falling, it's flying, it stalls. Down he comes, he's at 200 feet above the ground. He'll come down, there's 175, 150, down to 100 feet above the ground. Let's see if he's got some more energy. He's gonna take it right down toward the ground, continues to fly it and fall at the falling leaf, going off to the right hand side. Come on John, pull back, let's get some power. Oh! Down over the runway and on the little ditch in between. How about that? This hey John, pull up, please. Thank you very much. He loves to play with the trees and scare the air boss and me to death. We're gonna rip his arms off and beat him with him. <laughs> Keeps up doing that stuff. Now watch John as he rolls inverted. Listen for the engine to sputter. He's waving! There you go, and another flaming restart, and that's just a fake arm. He's actually got his hands on the stick. And John, pull back. No, he was really waving at you. Kept his hand on the stick, off the throttle. Now, this is called the harried pass. Look at how slow he goes and how close he gets to the ground. He's going to fly the fuselage. The wing's not generating much lift. Down he comes, lower and lower, power in. Watch him. That tail on the left 
wingtips down to about three feet above the ground. There's the quick recovery. Man, this guy is awesome, and I hope you like him as much as I do. With over three years of his life flying in the air, John Moore from Minnesota. The guy we all love to watch because he handles it so very well. There's the Harry Pass, Bill Barber Award winner, Art Show Memorial Trophy winner, the Stock 220 Steerman. Dat is een gevaarlijk volgens mij. Zo, de stering. Wat zei je? Hij kan wel vliegen. Hij kan wel vliegen, dat wel. Maar het is ook spectaculair gevaarlijk. Nou, let's watch yeah, yeah. the landing on this. He's going to land fairly close to us on the runway from the left and headed over to the right. His landing is going to be different. He solos from the back seat. You can't really see out in front of you very well when the nose is up. So when he flares to land, he can't see it. So let's watch John before he gets ready to land on this. He's going to say, okay, I'm going to roll it on his back so I can see where the runway is. Controls are all whacked out now. Watch him. The engine's going to quit in a minute, so he's got to roll up right. But he's not going to just stop there with this approach. Watch him just before he lands. Watch for another snap roll. That's a high-speed stall. Now, cross-controlling it with the left wing down, a lot of right rudder. Just before he touches down, he'll be able to see where he is on the runway. He'll straighten it out and bring it into show center. Look at it. Watch him put one wheel down at a time. At the risk of being politically incorrect, that's a one-wing landing called one, a Chinese landing, one-wing low. Yeah, okay, yeah, you wish you thought of it yourself. I got people booing me now. I'm getting the hisses. Watch him keep the tail off the ground, keep the power on, working the brakes on his rudder pedals. He's going to bring it to show center. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as he gets turned around, He's going to turn it around for us. Do a little NASCAR burnout in a, <laughs> in a 1930s vintage airplane. Actually, this was built in 1943. But I hope, ladies and gentlemen, he can hear you now. Make some big Pensacola noise for the man from Minnesota. Nobody does it better than John Moore. Way to go, Johnny. He'll climb back into the back cockpit, taxi back, and we are going to go from some of the slowest flying stuff you will see to some of the fastest moving stuff you will see. 